In this scenario, we have a tiny sphere, though I've drawn it as a somewhat larger one, and it has a charge of capital Q, and nearby is another sphere of some arbitrary charge. For the purposes of this problem, it presumably doesn't matter what that sphere's charge is, but just to simplify things, we'll be imagining that it's neutrally charged at first. Now, some portion of the first sphere's charge will be transferred to the second sphere. We'll call that smaller portion a uh, lowercase q. The problem asks us to find the value of small q over large q that will maximize the electrostatic force between the two spheres. In other words, we're looking to figure out how much of big Q we'll need to transfer. So one way to think about it is that we're trying to find a value of small Q in terms of big Q. The formula for electrostatic or Coulomb force is given by Coulomb's law, or the force is equal to the constant K times uh, the ch uh, charges of the two objects, Q sub 1 times Q sub 2 divided by the squared distance between them, or r squared. And, of course, q sub 1 and q sub 2 represent the charges of the two relevant particles. Or, in this case, uh, one of our charges is equal to big Q minus the small q that is being transferred. So I'll write q sub 1 as big Q minus small q. And the other charge is just small q since that's the charge that the second particle gains. Our new formula is this, which is basically just Coulomb's law, except I've replaced the charges uh, with the charges that we have. So small q times, in parentheses, a big Q minus small q. Now that we have our formula in terms of the charges we have, we want to maximize the Coulomb force based on how much of the charge small q is being transferred. Using calculus, we can find the maximum force by taking the derivative of the force with respect to the transferred charge, or small q. So here I have written the derivative of the force uh, with respect to the small charge, uh, small q. The distance between the particles is staying constant, and uh, the Coulomb constant k certainly isn't changing. So we can write those variables to the left of the derivative, since we're not going to be differentiating with respect to constants. Let's also simplify this function a bit by distributing small k over the parentheses. And we now have something that we can more easily differentiate. This small q times capital Q bit just becomes big Q because the variable of differentiation disappears in these sorts of cases because of the power rule. And for the same reason, we apply the power rule to the next term here as well, the small q squared, changing the small q squared into 2 times small q. Now when we maximize a function in calculus, we set the function equal to 0. So I will do that here. And now we must find what small q has to be for this to be equal to 0. Keep in mind that k and r squared are not going to be 0 on their own. So the only way for this function to be equal to 0 is if this entire uh, big Q minus 2 small q term equals 0, so that it multiplies against these other terms and makes the whole function 0. So, to make this even simpler, let's just ignore the k over r squared entirely and set uh, big Q minus 2q equal to 0 on its own. Now all that's left to do is to rewrite this formula so that small q over large q is on its own. We add 2q to both sides of this equation, and then we'll have to divide both sides by large q and both sides by 2. And small q over large q becomes equal to 1 half. This means that the electrostatic force is maximized when small q over big Q is equal to one-half or 0.5.